I think for a lot of you, your first thought on a question like this is going to be, I don't want to do it. This is crazy hard. I mean, it to me, I'm good at math. This this is this seems like a giant mess. So then your second thought is, let's put it in Desmos, right? We have an X and a Y. We can graph it. We can compare. And, and we could do that, but it's going to be a lot of typing because you've got so many terms. If you type one thing wrong, you might have to retype everything, right? So this is a, this has a potential, even with Desmos, to become a bit of a problem. So we could do it. Uh, we got to be really careful, though. But I also think that there's a simpler way. I definitely want to arithmetize. You know by now that that's kind of my whole point of this ex this exercise. Um, but I am also going to be very smart about how I arithmetize here. I I don't want to pick zero because I see there's a lot of x's and y's in the denominators. They're all being multiplied. And I don't want to divide by zero, right? You can't have that happen. So um, I'm going to avoid that by making both X and Y equal to one. And you might be thinking, wait, well, I can, I can make them the same number? That's allowed? Yeah, it's fine. Maybe it won't work. I genuinely don't know, but that's okay. Let's see how it goes and then deal with any remaining issues, right? So the, the, the big problem people have with arithmetize is you get so worried about what if it doesn't work that you never try to see if it works, right? The point of this exercise in particular was to get you to just have the confidence to try. So let's see, um, we're gonna put one in and the benefit of one, especially when we have a lot of exponents, which I see in the answer choices, is that one doesn't have any sort of properties when we have exponents, right? So I can almost ignore that aspect of the question. So when I put this in, I'm gonna get uh, one plus 12 is 13 over negative seven, one minus eight. Uh, one times negative seven is negative seven and one minus eight, as you notice how all this multiplication goes away, is also negative seven. So at this point, Here's what I would do. I'd probably just go to this calculator and, and solve that, but um, I am gonna use Desmos because, uh, I don't know, I wanna show you what you could do. So if I um, go here, let's see if this works. So I wanna do 13 divided by negative seven plus negative seven divided by negative seven. And, and notice what it did. It, it did do this weird thing with um, the negative. It doesn't make a difference. I do kind of, I wish it were on the top, but it's, it, does, it doesn't make a difference. So just trust the process a little bit here. Um, okay, so we get some messy number and that's that's fine. These are sevens, I, I didn't expect it to be good. So what should happen now is if we do the same thing to the other choices, I should be able to um, see the same messy number, right? So let's do choice A and, and genuinely, I, I wouldn't really write this down. I would go to my calculator and just start typing all the little pieces. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do one plus, this is choice uh, A, one plus one plus four, right? So remember, I'm, I'm putting, oop, what happened there? One plus one plus four, right? I'm putting uh, a one in for both X and Y. So it's very easy for my brain to handle, right? And then I'm dividing that by one minus 16 plus 64. Different number, right? So Seems bad, seems seems wrong. So it's 0.122, uh, I think I did everything right, so we're gonna cross that out and we're gonna move on. So let's get rid of that choice and let's try another one. So now choice B, right? So I'm putting in parentheses so that I don't have to deal with the annoying fraction, but one plus nine plus 12 is the top, right? Divided by, again, one minus eight plus one minus eight. Another messy number, but it's not the messy number I want, right? So that's probably wrong too. So you see what I'm doing though, right? I'm, I am doing some arithmetic in my brain, but it's very easy arithmetic because it all involves the number one. I'm just getting rid of the variables, basically keeping the coefficients. But the rest of the arithmetic I'm leaving to the calculator. So hopefully it's doing it right. Let's, let's trust the process a bit here. So choice C, one plus 13 minus eight divided by one minus eight. Now that's the same messy number, right? So, okay. Now I don't know if this is right, so I'm gonna check it off. It could be the case that D also produces that same messy number, but you can see, all right, looking pretty good. So let's get rid of it and let's go to, to, to D here. So same process, one plus 13 minus eight divided by one minus 16 plus 64. Different messy number. That's it. That's all I would do. So I get that I'm skipping some steps here that some of you who are not good at algebra are just like, wait, why, where did these numbers come from? What, one plus 13 minus eight? Uh, to be honest, if you can't handle that, 
This is a good skip question for you, regardless of arithmetize or anything like that. You need to be comfortable with the way that like numbers and letters behave in math. We don't need to work with them and do all this crazy algebra, but um, we do need to understand what's going to happen. And this is why I love the number zero and one is they, they are the simplest numbers to work with with variables because they eliminate things uh, in, in various ways, right? Zero would have completely knocked out the denominators of all but one of these answer choices. Just choice B would be remaining, right? Because we would have a divid divided by zero in the others and that's not allowed. So I couldn't pick zero. Maybe I could have picked zero for X and not for Y, but I just, to me, picking one for both was mentally easier because then I could kind of just like not have to calculate anything. Again, I'm just putting them in and, and like in choice D, right? One for X, one times one squared is one, right? So that's where that one comes from. Plus 13 times one times one. That's where the 13 comes from. Minus eight times one. That's where the negative eight comes from, right? So uh, if you can do that in your head, then you can arithmetize in this question very confidently. I do get that it's hard, but um, you know, I, this is why we have practiced arithmetizing so that we're ready to go when we get to this weird stuff uh, and we are confident with the strategy. Like I said, we could Desmos here. We could have put all these in and compared the graphs, but I just, I don't know. I don't trust it. There's too many exponents, too many opportunities to mess up. And I think without a keyboard, uh, it's very difficult to type that on like a tablet. So I've managed to set up my keyboard here so I could do it just for this question. Hopefully this makes sense. Please comment a few questions though. This is a really tough question. You could see something like this on the SAT. So you need some strategy to get it right.